are listening to the Art of Homeschooling podcast, where we help parents cultivate creativity and connection at home. I'm your host, Jean Miller, and here on this podcast, you'll find stories and inspiration to bring you the confidence you need to make homeschooling work for your family. Let's begin. Hey there, friend, and welcome to another episode here on the Art of Homeschooling podcast. Today, we're delving into the importance of looking at the stories we tell ourselves, not only the stories we tell about ourselves, but also our children and our families and our homeschool life. It's time to dive deep and remember that you're on a journey too, as a person, a parent, and a homeschooler. In this episode, you'll gain powerful insights into the why behind your homeschooling and learn how to share your story with friends and family. Getting clear on your homeschool story can also help guide your homeschooling decisions that you need to make, help you be comfortable on the hard days, and empower you by reminding you why you chose to homeschool in the first place. So you can embrace what you truly want in your homeschooling, what you want homeschooling to be for your family. Because how you tell your homeschool story matters. Homeschooling is a deeply personal and unique journey for each and every one of us. But what I've noticed in my own 25 plus years of homeschooling, and as well as in my current role as a mentor of homeschoolers these days, we often find ourselves trapped in a narrative that is really imposed on us by society or by what we think society wants from us or by our own judgment and internal dialogue. These narratives may be rooted in things like comparison, self-doubt, or expectations, and they often limit our potential for growth and even can prevent us from fully enjoying and embracing our homeschooling experience. So in this episode, I invite you to pause, pause and reflect on the narratives, the stories that have shaped your homeschooling journey so far. What stories have you been telling yourself? Are they empowering or are they perhaps limiting? It's time to examine them with empathy, warmth, and a sprinkle of hope. Because after all, we want homeschooling to be a path of growth, connection, and joy. So often, though, we get caught up in what homeschooling should be according to external standards. We compare ourselves to others, which leads to us doubting ourselves, our abilities, and even leads to overwhelm at times. It's really important for us to recognize that there is no one size fits all approach to homeschooling. What matters most is what we want our homeschooling experience to be and how that aligns with our values, our children's unique needs, and our family's dynamics. So I invite you to take a moment to visualize the homeschooling journey you truly desire. Picture a homeschool where where your kiddos are thriving, where learning is joyful and engaging, where the lessons are hands-on and enlivened by the arts and nature, where connections are deep and meaningful. Hold on to that vision because it is within your reach. Now, let's look at the narratives that may be holding you back. Are there any beliefs that no longer serve you? Are there stories about your abilities as an educator or your children's potential that need to be rewritten? It's time to challenge those limiting stories and replace them with more empowering ones. 
as you uncover these narratives, remind yourself of your personal agency. That's the power you hold to shape your homeschooling story. You are not a passive observer here, but an active participant in your children's education. I hope that you can really embrace this role as a guide, a facilitator, a really a lifelong learner alongside your children. Sometimes we don't even realize that the stories we tell ourselves are affecting us the way that they are. Here's a simple exercise that you can try, and I'm going to give you an example. The exercise is called My Homeschool Story Told Two Ways. (laughs) And here is just one little taste of an example that I wrote from the perspective of a homeschooler who's in their second year of homeschooling. So I have version one and version two. Here we go. Version one, we're about to finish up our second year of homeschooling and it feels like we're always behind. I never finish everything I had planned from the beginning of the year. I planned this great block on local geography and we only did half the field trips. Am I ever going to feel settled and on top of this homeschooling life? Version number two, we are about to finish up our second year homeschooling. And wow, did we do some amazing things this year? We did a block on local geography and got to go on three incredible field trips. One of them was to the Maritime Museum on Lake Erie, where we learned all about shipwrecks aboard a barge. The kids were so excited to see the captain in his uniform and hear stories of life on the Great Lakes. It's amazing how much we learned from one visit to this amazing museum. Can you see how by simply choosing a different lens to look through, a different way to look at and tell your story, that you can dramatically shift that entire story you're telling yourself? Remember, you have the power to redefine your homeschooling story. You can create an educational experience that aligns with those values you hold so dear and nurture your children's growth, bring joy to your family. Now I have an exciting invitation for you. I'd love to have you join me and my team at the Taproot Teacher Training 2023 this summer. Taproot is a four-day retreat and training experience designed specifically for Waldorf-inspired homeschoolers of all grades, and it takes place every year the first weekend in August here in Northeastern Ohio. And here's what I want you to know. The theme of Taproot 2023 is my homeschool story. Taproot is an immersive experience. It's an event where you'll have the opportunity to delve into the power of narratives in homeschooling. Tapper 2023 will be a place where you can connect with like-minded parents, learn from experienced Waldorf homeschoolers, and gain the tools to craft your empowering homeschooling story. At Taproot, you'll be surrounded by a community of like-minded people. You'll get support, encouragement, and inspiration. And you'll find guidance in rewriting your narratives, embracing your strengths, and unlocking the true potential of your homeschooling journey, all while having fun singing, learning, going on hikes, laughing with others on this path. To learn more about Taproot 2023 and reserve your place, please visit artofhomeschooling.com slash taproot 2023. And if you're listening to this at a later date, you can find more about Taproot on my Art of Homeschooling website. We can't wait to welcome you to this transformative experience. I hope you will join us. 
As we wrap up this episode, I just want to mention this fascinating idea from Rudolf Steiner, who was the founder of the very first Waldorf school. And he proposed that we are each on a path of development and that this development happens in seven year cycles throughout our lives, cycles or stages that each bring their own themes and growth. Steiner described 10 seven-year cycles of human life, each stage of life having their own unique challenges and rewards. These create the patterns that we weave together throughout our lives, how we grow, not just in childhood, but also as adults. So you might be familiar with the seven-year cycles of childhood. We often talk about how children learn differently at different ages. So there's age zero to seven, seven to 14, and 14 to 21. If you want to hear more about that, I encourage you to check out my episode called Thinking, Feeling, and Willing, Three Ways Children Learn. But did you know that these seven-year cycles continue throughout our lives? Here is a quote from the prologue of a wonderful book by longtime Waldorf teacher, Betty Staley. It's in her book called Tapestries, Weaving Life's Journey. And here's what she says. An image of the complexity of human life is that of tapestry weaving. In each of our lives, the warp is formed of those strands which are given, that which we bring with us and what we are born into. As we examine the warp, we can see that some threads are tight, others are loose, some are smooth, others may be rough. The warp bears the imprint of the one who threaded the loom. This underlying foundation is the basis upon which we can build an imagination of what our weaving will be like. Then we take the shuttle in our hands, each to weave the tapestry of our lives. How we fashion it depends on how we respond to and interact with what we experience and encounter, how we shape it through our free will. Each of our lives is different. No two tapestries are the same. This idea is so compelling. Just as I find that Steiner's suggestions for working with children from the early years through the teens to be just spot on and so accurate, I also find it wonderful to read about and explore our journeys beyond adolescence. So here are just a few really interesting highlights from these years. So ages 21 to 28, the next seven-year cycle after adolescence, we live through impulses rather than thinking. We explore our individuality and build up experiences to meet the world with enthusiasm. Ages 28 to 35, we're more sensitive of ourselves. We become more inward and more thoughtful during these years. It's a time of our lives to be more realistic and practical. Ages 35 to 42, we're plumbing the depths of our souls. A kind, it's kind of a midnight of the soul, some like to call it. Ages 42 to 49, we do a lot of soul searching and we sense big changes ahead as we approach our 50s. Ages 49 to 56, we experience an ever-growing vision and understanding of our life. Ages 56 to 63, we often tend to take a hard look, a good hard look at our lives and have some sort of spiritual reckoning. Ages 63 to 70 is a time of harvesting and spreading the wealth. And ages 70 and beyond is a time for reflecting on all of our blessings. Wow, do you find that as accurate a description of the stages of life as I do? So fascinating to explore. Lots to contemplate here about our journeys and our stories. I always say to homeschooling parents that we're on a journey too. It's not just our children. 
If you want more suggested resources for exploring these ideas further, be sure to check out the show notes for this episode at artofhomeschooling.com slash episode 136. You'll also find a link to find out more about the Taproot teacher training there. Thanks for joining me today for this episode, How to Tell Your Homeschool Story. And come join us at Taproot if that's calling to you right now. Just remember, your story matters and you have the ability to shape it with empathy, warmth, and hope. Embrace your power, rewrite your narratives, and watch your homeschooling story unfold with purpose and joy. That's all for today, my friend. But here's what I want you to remember. Rather than perfection, let's focus on connection. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Art of Homeschooling podcast. 